I've looked at my analytics and I can confirm that this channel is watched almost entirely by men. I see you brothers. So you could be forgiven for believing that this channel is just one giant thrusting priapic totem of masculinity, which of course it is. However, today we're going to look at a ladies bike. More specifically, in fact, this lovely Doors city bike, which I believe dates back to the 80s. We're going to do a bit more exploration. Now, um, there's no real physiological need for a gender divide in terms of bike manufacture. Um, what really makes a ladies bike in marketing terms in the old days was this drop top tube, which we'll come on to in a minute. Apart from that, as long as the saddle is wide enough for your pelvis, which of course is a physiological difference between genders, um, and the actual size of the thing is appropriate for your body shape, then that really is the only difference that you need to be looking for. Um, of course, in the 80s, uh, marketing was rather less sensitive and uh, they thought that if you painted a pretty colour and put a basket on the front and they could sell it to women, which was where this kind of Edwardian throwback um, drop top tube persisted. Um, the reality of this is it only exists so that people can step through the frame instead of swinging a leg over it, which is considered unladylike. And of course, if you must cycle in floor length Edwardian petticoats, then this is more appropriate. Um, dropped top tube frames are still made today. In fact, my late father had one because he liked stepping through it instead of over it and he liked the bike. Uh, he also liked the colour. Um, so really, what makes a woman's bike? Um, well, nothing much really. Um, I love this one because it's a nice colour. I think it's been resprayed fairly recently. Um, when you look at it close up, it's pretty battered and needs quite a lot of attention, which is going to make this project extremely fun. Right, before the clean up and strip down, let's do a quick uh, tech inspection. Um, first thing that is noticeable is this Sturmey Archer three-speed internal gearing inside the hub. Um, never mind your roll-offs, this is the OG. Um, I've never actually serviced a Sturmey Archer before, even in my years working in bike shops. They weren't very fashionable in the 80s and 90s when I was uh, really getting obsessed, um, but we're gonna find out how to do it. Um, what else can we talk about? Uh, renewable energy, of course the original, um, a working dynamo, although all these dangling cables and this bare bulb might not survive the rebuild, we shall see. Um, a beautiful colour matched stay for a um, pizza rack, which I think every city bike should have nowadays. Very hip and very now. Um, notably alloy handlebar and stem combo instead of steel, which I'd say dates this perhaps to the later 80s, maybe even the 90s, although the technology is quite old fashioned. Um, decent wheels, um, which I don't think are gonna need too much attention. Uh, another thing uh, from the 80s was when I was poring over bike catalogues as a kid, cotterless cranks were always marketed as uh, being an advantage. If you had cotterless cranks, you were a baller because it meant that you avoided the pain of these things. Now. Cotter pins as a means of holding cranks on are demonstrable in their limits by this. Now, believe it or not, oh, I don't even know how I'm gonna fix that, but we'll see. Apart from that, I don't know what much, what else, if anything, it needs. Um, certainly the mud guards are held on with wire um, so that's easily fixed. And of course, things like these plastic grips and plastic saddle will be going in the bin and replaced with something nice, perhaps in leather. So without further ado, let's get this thing clean and shiny.
Tensioning the wheels is going to be a bit of a challenge given that all these spokes and nips are rusty. However, I do think it's only surface rust, so a bit of a soak in WD-40, I think we should be all right. A satisfying end to day one. All that remains now for the cleanup is put a few nuts and bolts in vinegar, as we always do. So there's quite a lot of rust on all um, on lots of the surfaces when you look close up. Obviously a night in degreaser for the chain, but fundamentally everything's here. There's really very little that needs replacing, uh, apart from the horrible saddle, which is gonna get replaced and some new grips. I actually think I can make everything that's here back into a lovely shiny bike. The old balled up foil trek definitely is working on this bit of chrome. This is a peen hammer. If you need peening, come and see me. Um, this mud guard certainly needs peening. As you can see, it is very dented and scuffed. In fact, I think the only way to beat these dents out of it and sort of smash it back into some sort of shape will be the good old fashioned way. As I said, this has been re-sprayed at some point in its life. I'm told relatively recently. Um, I believe underneath this paint job, there's a half decent Reynolds steel frame, 501, maybe even 531. Um, unfortunately, the paint job, as you can see, is not great in daylight. That said, I do have this left over from when I did the Quinny, blends with all shades of red. So we'll have a crack at this, then a top coat of wax, and I'm hoping it'll come up quite nice. You can see the remnant of a frame number on this bottom bracket shell, but like I said, it has been resprayed, so it's actually impossible to do any sleuthing just based on this. However, as I said, the uh, the presence of an alloy bar and stem instead of chrome steel does date this to the late 80s or early 90s. Um, and of course, I knew from the seller that it is a doors, as etched on this handlebar here, uh, handmade in England. This is a, a lovely handlebar. It's come up nice under spit and polish. So anyway, with these two pieces of evidence, I've been able to determine exactly what this bike is. So it didn't take much sleuthing. Obviously, we, we knew it was a Doors, um, and I took an educated guess at 1989. And before too long, I found it online. It's called a Doors Diploma, um, a name obviously intended to conjure a romantic notion of riding around some ancient university town with uh, a basket full of flowers, which I believe it did do in Cambridge before I got my hands on it. Um, so anyway, I've found pictures of what it used to look like. This is going to be a um, sensitive rebuild. It's not going to be a completely faithful rebuild because obviously I'm going to upgrade things like the saddle, the grips. Um, but generally speaking, everything that was on this bike when I got it is salvageable. So I could build it absolutely as it looked in the catalogue, but I think I can do better than that.
These Sturmi Archer gears are actually beautifully simple, if primitive. Uh, you've only got a three-speed thumb shifter. Uh, you feed the cable through at the other end, uh, like you will with a six or seven-speed thumb shifter. And then what I need to do now is just pull this cable tight by hand and uh, nip it off here at the uh, pinch bolt. And then what you've got here is a barrel adjuster that you can use to tune the tightness of the cable. Once the cable's tight, um, basically it works. lovely leather bar tape came all the way from Barcelona and it's a perfect match for the new saddle. Here it is, sports fans, another beauty. Uh, yes, these gears and brakes are gloriously antediluvian and imprecise. In fact, the whole thing's quite rattly and, uh, and ancient, but it's very pretty, it looks very cool, and of course it's comfy, which is all that really matters. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking with me for another project. Uh, stay tuned, there's some more big bombs to drop soon on this channel, including a complete bike giveaway coming this summer, uh, as well as, of course, a return to some of the really high-end mountain bikes that I know a lot of you are here for. Um, so, And also, please hit me up in the comments, which is one of my favourite things, and hopefully see you all again soon.